Okay, so today's lecture is going to be on market maker fundamentals and it's going to be a top down approach. So there's going to be roughly six kind of chapters to this lecture, trying to keep it around two hours max uh, might bleed over a little bit, but uh, hopefully trying to keep it pretty streamlined. I've done this lecture with my students kind of like yesterday, so I have some practice. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to talk about is market cycles, which is essentially how the market moves, right? between consolidations, expansions, reversal, retracements, and what necessary conditions we need to frame those. Then we're gonna jump into time frame alignment, looking at the three time frames associated with market maker models and something called multiple time frame analysis or top down analysis, you might've seen that. Then we're gonna hop in shortly into the anatomy of a market maker model. Essentially, we're just gonna discuss the schematic. You may have heard terms before like low risk buy, low risk sell, silver bullet, which is the second phase distribution. So we'll touch a bit on that and uh, kind of how the anatomy of this schematic works. Then we'll talk about entry criteria, how I actually position myself to get involved in market maker model trades, then looking at trade plans, and then we'll do a top down analysis and uh, a worked example, and we'll actually do it from today. Um, it was actually a very nice day for the exact model I teach my students uh, on the NASDAQ today. So we'll get a really like a recent example. So yeah, that's uh, that's the plan of that's the plan of action for this. Buffering, okay. You're hearing double. That's not good. Are you guys still hearing double? This is my first time doing the stream, my bad. <laughs> Someone tell me if we're still hearing double. I know there's a bit of a delay. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll get better at this as we do it. Um, awesome, yeah, it's my first time doing this like YouTube stream thing, so I have no idea how it works. <laughs> so so bear with me. Um, okay, let's hop right into it. So uh, I've already pre-typed out these notes so you don't hear me clicking away on my keyboard, which is like really a piece of feedback I've gotten from a lot of my lectures. <laughs> so let's talk about part one, which is gonna be phases of price delivery. So at any point in time, we can say that the market is either in two stages of delivery. One is going to be an accumulation and two is going to be a distribution. Now you may be asking yourself, a fees I've seen ICT refer to many more stages of, uh, of distribution, right? Or of things the market can be doing. Things like reversals and retracements are two common ideas that come to mind. And the way I teach is going to be framed around just looking at distribution, right? and retracements as reversal and reversals as a form of distribution. So we're either going to be accumulating in the market or we're going to be distributing in the market. So let's really contextualize this. An accumulation or a consolidation is the origin or the starting point of any distribution. The market generates liquidity through an accumulation and then it distributes towards a point of accumulation understanding this nuance that the market is either itself accumulating or expanding towards a previous area of accumulation is the basis for thinking about ERL to IRL on the higher time frame. So when price is accumulating, right, the market is using time as a function to create a higher time frame PD array. Now, this is something that's often kind of hard to visualize, but if we can imagine right? A consolidation area on an intermediate time frame. Let's say something like an hourly chart. Resting below that intermediate time frame consolidation, we can prove there will be a higher time frame PD array, something like a daily swing low or a daily fair value gap. Now you don't have to take my word for this. I implore you to go into your charts and back test this exact thesis, right? So for example, if I pull up a hourly chart here, and I look for a point of accumulation on this hourly chart, something like this. I can immediately say, without looking at my higher time frame chart, that below this consolidation is going to rest a daily higher time frame PDA array. So I know right now that there, there's going to be a higher time frame daily PDA here. And what is a PDA array? Well, for those who have been to any of my other lectures, I like to use only two internal range liquidity or a fair value gap or external range liquidity a swing low in this case, or a swing high. So now if we shift up a time frame, obviously what we're gonna see is exactly that, right? We have a swing low in the market right below this consolidation, which also happens to rest inside this daily inefficiency, okay? 
So that's not a cherry picked example. Go into your charts and back test any time frame on the intermediate time frame, which we're going to discuss in part two, is going to contain a higher time frame PD array below it because a consolidation is a function of not price, but time as the market expands higher, creating higher highs and higher lows. It will put in area of consolidations in which below rest PD arrays, things like inefficiencies, things like swing lows themselves in the market. In order for the market to place a swing low, for example, what it must do is create a range, right? And establish a low. Well, in that range, we're going to have a consolidation. And in order for price to ever price in a fair value gap, right? There needs to be a three, a three candle pattern. So we need to see some area in between these candles, right? I can just show you a fair value gap, for example, on the daily. We need to see, right? Something like this. If we have a daily fair value gap right in here, which we can mark out by this gray box, I can already tell you there's going to be a consolidation above this daily fair value gap on the hour, right? In which price consolidated, leaving this impulse leg on the daily chart as an inefficiency in time, in price over time, right? So then price will draw back into that. If price doesn't ever stop expanding and start to consolidate, then this inefficiency would be infinitely large, right? We just keep putting in an inefficiency over various time frames. So in this case, you can see this daily inefficiency right in here, right in this area. I know I can price in an hourly consolidation right above it. And let's go and prove that to ourselves, right? We can see that price is consolidating right? in this area right in here where the fair value gap is created on the daily time frame. This consolidation allows for the time component of a PD array, right? A daily fair value gap to match the price component, which is an inefficiency, a buy side imbalance. Just that distinction, right? That there's going to be consolidations which rest above or below higher time frame PD arrays is the basis, right? For price delivery in the market. And the actual fundamental rationale as to why market maker models work because price is either expanding towards previous consolidations, which rest above or below higher time frame PD arrays, which we use to frame ERL to IRL, IRL to ERL, or it's, it's consolidating, right? Creating those PD arrays. So there's an internal logic to that kind of statement. So let's talk about reverse reversals and retracements, which I define and I teach as a form of expansion, right? In reality, if we look at something like this, whoops, wrong side. If we look at something like this, right? A retracement and a reversal are both a form of expansion in the market. They're just, there's just specific, um, okay, sorry, reading this. There's just specific criteria associated with each of them. So a retracement is a pullback in the direction of institutional order flow, something I'll denote as IOF, right? So if we see no basic structure in the market, we can assume that if we're bullish, we're going to be creating higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and so on, right? This pullback, right, into some form of internal range usually is the basis of a retracement. And then we can use concepts that ICT teaches like simple ones like premium and discount, right? But the difference between this retracement and something that might look like this, right? Where we create a higher high and then a lower low and then a lower high and then a lower low. And then we reverse our state of delivery. Sometimes people call this a change of character is that this form of expansion here, right? Is shifting the order flow. We're flipping it. We're going from bullish order flow to bearish order flow. Whereas each of these pullbacks or retracements are continuation in the same higher time frame order flow, which in this case is going to be bullish order flow. And then each of these layers right, levels right here is a retracement in bearish order flow. So as we can see, there's just two definitions we need to be comfortable with when it comes to expansions. And that is a difference between a retracement and a reversal or a characteristic distribution, which is going to be expansion towards a higher time frame consolidation. Now that we've gotten that kind of housekeeping out of the way, let's take a look at the characteristic of a reversal specifically. One thing you must understand as an MMXM trader or as a structural trader is that a reversal can only occur with two specific conditions met in the market. The first is going to be the instance of a higher time frame PD array being engaged. 
Think of this like external ranges or internal ranges. You can also use things like order blocks and breakers, right? Volume imbalances, all sorts of PD arrays. But I highly recommend when you're starting to focus on swing highs and swing lows or lines <laughs> and inefficiencies or boxes. I tell my students, you can become profitable using these three things, a line, a box, and a Gantt and a GAN box, right? All you need to know is these three concepts, ERL, IRL, discount and premium, because the market is booking it 24 seven. That's the only way the market is booking price. So when we reach a higher time frame PD array, external range or internal range, we then need to see an SMT in the market, which is taught, you know, by ICT in addition to, you know, Dexter lab and, and those folks, uh, the monster lab about how SMTs frame SMRs. We want to see a SMT and this PD array be engaged to start thinking about a reversal. Without these conditions being met, we assume that every single retracement or revert or every single retracement, right, that we get lower is simply a higher time frame accumulation. It is not until we get the two conditions, higher time frame PD array, with an SMT on the higher time frame, that we can start to qualify our reversal. If not, I assume it's just going to be another retracement and the continuation of order flow. So you might be asking, what am I looking for with these SMTs? I will predominantly evaluate SMT divergences between the ES and NASDAQ on occasion, like high impact news, FOMC, CPI and NFP. Oops. I will consider YM or the DAP. And with these divergences, I'm looking to confirm an area of reversal in the market. Okay, so that is part one, phases of price delivery, accumulation or distribution. Retracements are simply a pullback in the direction of order flow and reversals are a key characteristic type of distribution or expansion, which causes a change in the state of delivery. It has to occur at a higher time frame PD array. It has to occur with an SMT. So the natural question now, which you should be asking is a fees, what is a higher time frame PD array and what is the alignment of time frames? That's the most important question. So let's get into that. So part two of this lecture is now going to jump into time frame alignment. What we want to do as market maker model traders or structural traders or ICT traders or whatever traders is identify three time frames which we can associate with some specific price action level, right? Whether it's going to be structure, a PD array, or uh, intermediate structure. So uh, generally speaking, or always speaking, the higher time frame in a market maker model is going to contain your PD array. This is going to be your internal range or your external range. The intermediate time frame is going to be your structure or another way to say this is or your MMXM, your buy and sell side of a curve. Now, the original consolidation on your intermediate time frame, like we talked about in the first first section, right, is going to rest above or below your higher time frame PD array. So if the market is moving from an external range high to an internal range, from a swing high to a fair value gap, we will see a characteristic market maker model with an original consolidation, right, at the sell side, which is the target, and it will have liquidated a previous consolidation that rests below our higher time frame swing high that will cause the reversal so as we can see if we think about it in steps the first step is going to be trading into a higher time frame pd array external range liquidity now what we're going to look for on the intermediate time frame is a full and complete market maker model it's going to look something like this i'm going to switch these orders we want to see this type of structure on our intermediate time frame. From our intermediate time frame, we are going to be able to frame our original consolidations as well as each of these components, low risk buy, smart money reversal, silver bullet, whatever you whatever whatever phases you want to uh, uh, mark out on your on your schematic. Then on the lower time frame, we're actually going to be looking for entries. And the great thing about market maker models is that they are fractal. So you don't have to believe me yet, but I will prove to you in a few minutes that a higher time frame retracement within this cell program. So let's say, for example, our higher time frame PD array is a daily swing high. 
for some market maker model traders, they might know we're going to look for hourly structure. This specific pullback right in here, this retracement, right? Remember this word retracement, which is a pullback in the direction of order flow is going to offer a complete lower time frame market maker model from this high into this low. So for example, if we're pulling back into an inefficiency on the chart, let's say this is a fair value gap, a SIBI, right? This SIBI down to this swing low, which is going to be our external range, will be a complete five minute, if we're looking at the daily time frame, market maker model. So let's say I zoomed in here. What would I be looking at here? What I would see is exactly the same structure looking like this, right? This would look identical or somewhat similar. Sometimes it's not a perfect, you know, two phase distribution on either side, but this will look something like this on the five minute chart. And you're going to be trading from this inefficiency, which is going to be bounded by this area of smart money reversal down to this swing low. Right? And this swing low is going to be the point of consolidation on a five minute chart. Again, don't take my word. Just wait, we'll get there. So now we're talking about our three time frames: higher time frame PD array, intermediate time frame structure, and then really zooming in to the lower time frame pullbacks, retracements to find entries. Okay, let's now define some of these time frames. And again, you might have heard MXM Trader or myself say that a retracement on a higher time frame is a lower time frame market maker model. This is something you can burn into your brain whenever you're considering these time frame alignments because it's so key. Essentially, you're never going to be trading a reversal. You're not trading this reversal up here. You're just trading a continuation from a pullback at all points in time. You are never going to be sniping the turtle soup, you know, high or low of the market maker model. You're not going to be entering on this area. You're going to be entering on these pullbacks, low risk buy, silver bullet, right? Low risk sell, silver bullet. These are going to occur as structural continuations in the direction of order flow. You're going to wait for structure to show you that you have a confirmed market maker model. So let's take a look at personalities and time frame alignment. If you want to be a swing trader, you're going to use three time frames: the weekly as your higher time frame, the four hour as your intermediate time frame, your structure, and then the 15 minute for your entries. So you're going to be taking 15 minute little retracement market maker models within this four hour structure. The exact same argument is going to be applied on three other time frames, depending on your personality. A day trader is going to use the daily, hourly, and five minute. A scalper is going to use the four hour, 15 minute, and one, uh, 15 minute and one minute. And then a super scalper, which you might recognize this as Cameron's model, is going to be using the one hour, five minute, and 30 second. And the same logic we've just discussed about time frame alignment and where, you know, what conditions you look for with each of these time frames applies irrespective of what time frames you use. You just need to pick one of these, you know, four permutations. I suggest to all my students and most of my students start in this category, which is the category I trade of daily, hourly, and M5. I really think that's the key to profitability. It gives you enough trades, enough signals, while also providing you a higher time frame thesis in most cases, a daily draw on liquidity, so that you won't get, you know, stopped out too often. You're not going to be taking these really low time frame entries. I think this is a really bread and butter way to start. And this is the the model the Market Maker X model trader teaches as well as kind of his bread and butter time frames um, from his course. A new one is dropping in April as well. Um, subtle plug. <laughs> okay. So now let's talk about part three, which is going to be entry criteria. Before I do that, I want to pause because I've gone through a lot of like content and I'm going to quickly take a look at the chat and see if there's any questions. So let me do that. <laughs> Can't take notes fast enough. How can we draw a correct range to define premium and discount? I'll answer that. Okay. I, I can't, you guys can hear me, right? Okay. 
Yeah, I think this is a delay on the stream. Sorry, again, first time doing this. So I see a question in the chat regarding how to draw the correct dealing range. Um, we'll actually answer this question once we hop on to our charts and we start to look at some real examples. What I would say is that a dealing range is going to be defined by uh, swing lows and swing highs in the market. So you're always going to have intermediate time frame lows and highs and intermediate time frame structure, right? So you might have something like this high to this low as a dealing range. But on a lower time frame, you're going to have these intermediate dealing ranges, something like this, right? So what I would recommend is when you're looking at drawing dealing ranges, premium and discount, you always want to keep an idea of this higher time frame context. Maybe this is your daily chart and you want to see where we are in a daily discount and premium, specifically when considering areas of reversal. However, when you look at these, you know, shorter time frame dealing ranges, these intermediate structure dealing ranges, what I would say is that you should look for high resistance to liquidity to be created every time you anchor your Fibonacci. So when anchoring your Fibonacci, look for high resistance liquidity to be created at your at your uh, anchor points. What do I mean by that? So let's say, for example, you have a generic chart that looks something like this and you're creating structure. But in reality, the structure looks something like this, right? Again, th this is more so aligned to what this would actually look like in a real chart. Price never moves this perfectly. You want to wait for high resistance liquidity to be created every time you anchor your new dealing range. So high resistance liquidity is going to look like something like a liquidity sweep, something like that. right? And then you want to see a break of structure. And ideally, you want to see some displacement right through that high. If you can have a displacement with a high resistance run below it, then you can anchor a new short term dealing range. Now, again, Right. This is not like a hard and fast rule, but this is going to give you a good ability. It's going to give you the ability to trade within this intermediate term range between, you know, a higher time frame structure. Um, that's what I would suggest for anchoring your uh, points, your uh, your dealing range points. But we'll take some we'll take a look at some more examples in the chart later. It's a really good question. Um, OK, let's now get into uh, part three. Which time frame do you use to identify displacement? What is the biggest Yep, I will go over bias on the day and I will also talk about timeframes for displacement once we get in to conditions. Okay, great questions. So now we want to look at entry criteria. We've framed what time frames we're going to be using, right? These are the four personality types and I suggest being the day trader. <laughs> and then we've also framed the phase of price delivery. We're either expanding towards all consolidations or we're simply consolidating only two things. Resting below or above old consolidations in the market, right, is a higher time frame PD array. So now you know, resting above a 15 minute consolidation is a four hour swing high or fair value gap. Resting below, right, a five minute or an hourly uh, consolidation is going to be a daily swing low or fair value gap. Same thesis for the four hour and the weekly, same thesis for the 15 and the one minute. It's all fractal. A higher time frame PD array above or below it will rest a lower time frame consolidation. So we want to always be considering expansion or consolidation as the two primary functions of a market. So entry criteria. This is what I like to call the conditions on each time frame. How do we get involved in trading market maker models? So in the higher time frame, I've already said it like five times, right? We need a higher time frame PD array to be engaged. This needs to be a external range, a swing high or a swing low and or an internal range, a fair value gap, a line or a box, right? Once we've engaged that area, we can now shift down to our intermediate time frame. Meaning, unless your higher time frame box or line, IRL or ERL, has been engaged, don't move time frames. The number of times some of my students have made the mistake of preemptively entering what looks to be market maker models without valid structural confirmation, meaning a valid higher time frame PD array, is, is all the time. And it happened to me as well because you're anxious to put on trades and you want to get involved, but wait 
for price to come to your specific areas of interest. Once you get that engagement of a higher time frame PD rate, you're not going to enter guys. If this is a daily fair value gap, you bet your ass you're not going to blindly say, okay, I'm long in this daily fair value gap, uh, IRL to ERL. No, of course not, right? What we are going to do and what I always say is that structure will support our decisions or structure will save our asses because we won't be getting in when we don't have confirmation. So then we're going to wait for our intermediate time frame conditions. One, we want to see a market structure shift out of our higher time frame PD array. You guys can see that in my schematic. We want to see something like this a swing high be put in and then us close through that swing high. For example, right here, we close through this swing high. This is our daily PD array. We're getting a market structure shift above this high. A question that always comes up is, well, what high do I use? Do I use this high or do I use this high? I have a lecture on my YouTube called advanced swing structure, which talks about short term highs versus intermediate term highs and what that means for market structure shifts. So go check that out after if you if you want that answer to that question, because it's a good question. Secondly, we want to see an optional SISD on the intermediate time frame. So for example, if our higher time frame is our daily, let's let's be very clear. Higher time frame, let's say is our daily. Right? On our intermediate time frame, let's gonna be our hourly. We're gonna want to see a market structure shift or an optional SISD, ideally both. What is a SISD? A SISD is the change in the state of delivery or the activation of a breaker. A good example of a SISD I can show you would be referring to this four hour chart from last week on NASDAQ, wherein price came into our higher time frame array. This was a daily fair value gap, right? We knew we were reversing because we had an SMT, right? That's one of our conditions that we want to see again. Right, SMT. And then we had our market structure shift above this high right in here. And we had our SISD level right here. The SISD is the activation of a bullish breaker block. And if that is, if you're unclear what that means, I can spend some time explaining that after, but I'm pretty sure most of us know what a SISD is. T Trades has a great video on it that's very simple, which you can watch. But if this is an A plus order block, which you can grade order blocks, right? So you want order blocks to sweep liquidity, trade into an imbalance, and then lead to displacement down. This area in here is going to be considered a breaker. And once we activate that breaker, bullish breaker in the market, this becomes our change in the state of delivery. You can see price comes back in as an immediate rebalance, tags this PD array, and then, you know, explodes towards our buy side objective. So we want to wait on our intermediate time frame to see a market structure shift and or a SISD. Higher quality if both happen, right? Finally, like I talked about in part one, we are going to be framing this only in the context of an SMT as well. For the highest quality reversals, we want to see an SMT. So if you're trading NASDAQ, you want to see ES put in a lower low or a higher low to that area of reversal inside your higher time frame PD array. So for example, if we see NASDAQ come in and create this lower low, then we know this is a high quality reversal. In a future lecture, I will talk about things like standard deviation projections, which we can use to frame moves like this, as you saw last week, right? We can kind of project a price move very accurately using some of these concepts but that is a topic for another lecture. Today we're just talking about, oh, sorry, the fourth deviation is right there. Yeah. Today we're just talking about market, market maker models, nothing else. Okay, so once we get our intermediate conditions met, market structure shift, SISD, I'll mark it on this chart for us as well. So this is our MSS, which will just be this little icon. And then we'll also mark out our SISD, and we'll call that SISD. Now we can go into our lower time frame to look at more potential opportunities or look for the next set of criteria to get involved in the trade. So on the lower time frame, so if we're using the daily hourly, the lower time frame is going to be our five minute chart. Again, just using these this kind of a time frame alignment you see here. First of all, we want the entry to be in a kill zone. 
what is a kill zone? I didn't write this out, but for New York, we want this to happen between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. For London, we want this to happen between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. Now, some traders trade the New York p.m. session, in which case you want to see this happen between about 1.15, right? 1.15-ish to 4 p.m. I uh, really it's going to be like 3:30 because by then you should have your entry. So these are the kill zone kind of alignments for time. Now, once you have a kill zone where you can now start to look for lower time frame entries, you have to have had both of these things happen. Higher time frame PD array must have been engaged. So this happened, you know, the day before. Then we wait for our hourly market structure shift out of this area and SISD with SMT. Again, look at last week's chart for an example, right? Traded into our higher time frame PD array, put in our. This is an hourly SMT, right? Inside this daily fair value gap, right? Once we get the SMT and we get the SysD, now what we want to look for is going to be our five minute entries all the way until we move from IRL to the draw on liquidity is going to be ERL. So it's going to be this high right here. Make that a bit bigger. So the same logic applies when we're looking at this chart. We want to be now framing longs all the way from this point here to this point here. If you're trading on the daily PD array, this could take one, two, or even three days. It could only take one day. You're going to be trading in alignment with order flow because we've had our reversal. Remember, reversal is the first thing we talked about, right? Up here. It's a change of character in price delivery. So now we are bullish all the way until we liquidate this external range from this internal range. Each pullback is going to offer us an opportunity or retracement is going to offer us an opportunity to go long in the market. So on our five minute chart, we're going to wait for an intermediate time frame stop hunt, which is going to be a liquidity sweep or a premium discount array retrace. I'm going to say that again. There's two conditions that you must see on the hourly before you go down to the five minute. So before you ever consider entries, you need MSS, SISD, and um, uh, SMT out of your key level. Then you want to wait on your hourly chart, for example, until you see in a kill zone a stop hunt or a premium discount array retrace. Once you see both those things, you can now follow the first two rules you saw here on the five minute. Remember what I said? So say you're bearish. What we're waiting for is the exact same thing. We're going to wait for a reversal in here. Maybe there'll be a lower time frame SMT. It's not necessary, but maybe there'll be a lower time frame SMT, something like that. Then you're going to wait for a market structure shift and a fair value gap entry on the five minute chart as well. So you're following the exact same rules you did on the hourly, just down one more time frame to the five minute. And like I always say to my students, I don't care what you enter on. You can enter on a FEG, an order block, a breaker, an inversion, turtle soup it. The PD array doesn't matter because you're getting involved in this area of high confluence. This retracement on the hourly is going to give you this next leg higher, right? On the hourly as an entry on the five minute. And then again, this entry in here, which is a turtle soup entry on the five minute is going to give you an entry long. As long as you see one of these two conditions met a stop hunt or a premium discount array retrace. So right here is an example of a premium or a discount array retrace. We have this hourly FVG. We come back into it and in here is where we like hunt for a five minute setup. Then maybe the next day, right? This is Tuesday. And the next day we get this hourly liquidity sweep, right? Now, once we liquidate these lows, we can look again, right? for a five minute entry. You need to have these two criteria met. And you'll hear people like uh, like Casper is a really uh, a great trader who says things like no raid, no trade. That's the example of what I'm talking about here. You want to see a liquidity sweep or a discount array retrace to go long on your lower time frame. Okay, so now let's talk about actually applying this to some examples. And I'll work these examples with my TP and SL management. Again, you can see exactly how I teach my students to manage their TP and SL right here, but I'll show you on a real chart. So let's pull up a blank chart and kind of apply everything we've just learned. Now is where it gets fun. 
Um, again, I'm going to see if there's any questions. Fees, you may want to explain what institutional swing point is. Will do. What about tomorrow? Return to a PDA and discount for longs and premium for shorts. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can explain the SMT here. Yes, yes, yes. I, I realize that might have been confusing. So let me show you the SMT. So last week we had this SMT right here. If we draw out this low and we expand it right here, this is our SMT with ES. As you can see, NASDAQ comes in and creates a lower hourly low in a daily fair value gap. Remember time frame alignment, daily fair value gap, hourly structure. So now we want to trade from this right reversal into what on well, this very nice original consolidation right the market's either consolidating or expanding towards an old consolidation and you're gonna see right here how beautiful this hourly sell model played out once we got a reversal in the exact same way we had the buy model play out but very good question that was the smt sorry you didn't it wasn't as clear on the four hour great question um let's see is it always necessary to return to a pda and discount for longs and premium for shorts no not always and you'll often find that the market is in a hurry meaning the market won't retrace a discount or a premium in which case i'll put on less size right like everything i'm saying has there's never i don't teach chart patterns i teach narrative and, and logic right so i won't ever say you must follow xyz rules however premium and discounts one of the most supreme you know tried and true concepts in in trading as you can see in this dealing range price doesn't come back into a discount but it does come back into a discount of this dealing range, right? By one tick. So what you need to do as a trader is modify your risk parameters and the amount you're gonna put on each trade based on the criteria or conditions you're seeing. If there's no discount or premium, maybe that's against your trade plan and you don't trade it. I personally don't mind um, not trading discount of my lower time frame, but I will always need to see my intermediate time frame, like the hourly, give me discount. That's just something I've adjusted to seeing, you know, spooling price away from, you know, lower time frame discount. But on the intermediate time frame, yes, I will always wait for these two conditions. These are the conditions I use for myself. Intermediate time frame, MSS, SysD, and then on the lower time frame before I get involved, I need to see this intermediate term stop hunt, liquidity sweep, or premium discount trace. So if I get a liquidity sweep, I'm okay. But if I don't, I need to wait for a, a premium array to be hit or a discount array to be hit. Great question. Really great question. Okay. Now let's frame a full top down um, um, example of a market maker model. And the best example we have, guys, is today. It couldn't be better. Um, it's like I had the market maker model, the market makers in my ear today saying I had a lecture and they had to give me a good example. <laughs> okay, so let's do our time frames. Let's start off by looking at the daily because remember I said that's the bread and butter kind of a trade setup you want. So as you can see immediately here on the daily, we were given a very clear institutional signal yesterday to expect lower prices today. Again, we don't trade reversals. Although you might often hear smart money reversal you have to recognize we are getting involved in these retracements retracements remember again section one a retracement is an area where there's a pullback in the direction of order flow for another leg that's where we are specialists because we don't have to trade this monday uh choppy price or this Tuesday distribution if we don't have if we don't have a setup. We wait for our retracements to get involved. We are trading the next leg of that model. So as you can see, on the daily chart, there's a very clear SMT here. And I'm gonna make this just like that, and then like this, so you can see. Right? So where is it? Could have sworn that Monday and Tuesday formed an SMT. Maybe they both took out the high. Here we go. Yep. Oh, I guess we did take it out. Oh, my bad. My apologies. We did also take it out on the ES or on the NASDAQ. If I'm not. Oh, no, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, did we? Yeah, here's our SMT. There we go. So we have our SMT right in here. 
There we go. That's it. Okay. So we've liquidated a daily high, right? The previous daily high. As you can see on Monday, we came in and we swept out this high. So this is going to be our ERL. I'll, I'll catch you call this uh, external range liquidity. And this is going to be on our daily chart. And as we know, the external range liquidity on the daily chart, the next expected move is going to be a move into internal range on the daily chart. So we're just going to do top down analysis. So if we're starting off at a line, we're going to expect a move back in to right, this fair value gap, which we'll mark out with this gray thing. And we'll also right, maybe expect a move lower into maybe this inefficiency. I had a monthly fair value gap marked out here as well. That we formed. Oh, wait, no, maybe not. Maybe it was weekly. Maybe it was just a daily. Okay. So let's let's uh, let's just look at these levels right here. So we're we're expecting this move from external back into internal, and we also have potentially this swing low to target as well, which is going to be external as well on the daily. Okay. I already know what the questions are going to be. So if he's, why didn't we bounce at this fair value gap? If we're going external to internal, why didn't we come from here and then move from internal to external? Remember what I said about structure? Structure is going to be the thing that saves us. So if you know, like there's more, there's more than just this going on right now. We have a higher time frame bearish order flow in my opinion, and there's higher time frame retracement targets. So as I said last week, we hit kind of that fourth standard deviation of this move right up here leaving an SMT on the four standard deviation with uh, yes. And also we now have these 20 day lows to look back to. So if again, I have a lecture on IPTA 20 day look backs and 40 day look backs, I also have a PDF on this, but we essentially have higher time frame sell side liquidity targets that I'm interested in seeing. I don't, I don't want to see price continue to make higher highs without actually pulling back into the reasonable level of, you know, at least the 20 day lows in the market. So this great indicator, uh, I think it's, yeah, maybe it's two degrees. Yeah, I, I'd want to see this 20 day low as a potential area for reaccumulation of longs if I want to stay long term bullish in the market. Again, that's not a concept I'm teaching here today. So let's just talk about this move from external to internal. So once we hit our daily array, we look at our hourly chart. And again, what do we want to frame at our daily array for a reversal? Based on our conditions, we want to see a higher time frame PD array and an SMT. Fantastic. Higher time frame PD array, SMT right here. Those two conditions have been met. I am now looking for a move back into internal. Now you're going to say, well, price came into internal here and did not bounce. But look, if we were going to move higher, say, for example, we wanted to do this and then continue to move back from internal to external, what would we have needed to see? Let's look at our conditions, right? We would need to see on the intermediate time frame a market structure shift, a SISD, and an SMT. Well, we don't see any sign of reversal in this daily fair value gap. There is no market structure shift, no SISD, and no displacement out of it. So we can now assume that price is going to move lower. Where else can it move lower to? Well, I see a very nice original consolidation. So you can see we had a consolidation here, all right? But as I said before, the market is expanding towards old consolidations, right? That rest above or below higher time frame PD arrays. So I see a daily swing low in here and a daily fair value gap, right? So two higher time frame PD arrays. Let's see if there's any other higher time frame PD arrays. Um, no, I mean the monthly monthly fair value gaps all the way down here. So we have two higher time frame PD arrays right in here. This daily inefficiency, this daily swing low. You could even use an order block. I suggest you just stick with swing lows and fair value gaps. Now, on the hourly, you can see a very clear original consolidation that's going to contain the range that creates the swing low. Fantastic. Price will want to expand towards that area if we are in a sell program. We're obviously not getting support from this consolidation area here, right? So we're not liquidating this consolidation and then moving higher. So that thesis has been ruled out because we haven't gotten our intermediate time frame condition. I haven't seen a market structure shift on this hourly. I haven't seen an SMT and I have not seen a SISD. No displacement, I assume, a continuation of bearish order flow. So today, right, now let's look to get let's look to take a trade. 
let me pull up a day separator for us. Now we want to take a trade. So this happened on Monday and then Tuesday, right? We see news right here act as the distribution. As you know, if you've seen any of my lectures, I only trade usually on high impact news days. There was no entry I took before news because did I get my intermediate time frame conditions met? And those intermediate time frame conditions again are right, a stop hunt or a premium array retrace. Before 10 a.m., although I wanted to play short into this original consolidation, right? I really did want to trade this 10 a.m. distribution lower. I did not have any way to get involved in this trade. For me, there was nothing here that I could use because I did not get my conditions met. So what I did was sit on my hands, guys. I didn't trade that distribution lower, and instead I waited for the condition. Well, here's the condition right here. In here, we have a H1 Sibby, right? Let's draw a fib from this swing high to this swing low. You can see this here, right, is not in premium of this range. It's in discount of this of this dealing range, right? So many of my students said, well, I'm not taking this entry, it's too, it's too premium. What I said I would do is use half size, right? And look for my lower time frame confirmation. So what would I do? Structure will always save me, correct? So on my lower time frame, I must wait inside of that inefficiency for the same thing to form, right? A market structure shift and a fair value gap. So let's see if I get that. I zoom in to this area because a retracement on the hourly, I expect this to offer a complete market maker model. I expect this to look like on the five minute this. Okay. If I don't see this characteristic in here, it's not worth trading for me. So I have to wait and be patient to see if I get that. Let's see what happens. Let's go down to the five minute. Well, on the five minute, I see we put in a nice consolidation with relative equal lows right here. This is going to be our sell side liquidity, right? And then we trade in to this inefficiency. Right, I'm also going to be watching this chart here for any notable SMTs that I see. Uh, and as you can see, I see an SMT right here on the five minute as well, right? So SMT qualifies. So now I have many conditions met for me to put on some risk. And this seeing this SMT, seeing our retrace into my inefficiency, where can I get involved? Well, I'm targeting this slow. Right? I'm obviously targeting this slow for my higher time frame, but again, trade management, one half at the lower time frame swing, right? The lower time frame market maker model, or 40 points. Then one half at the intermediate time frame PD array, which is gonna be the same as the higher time frame, which is gonna be this swing low down in here. So I have to wait for my conditions to be met on the five minute. On the five minute, SMT, where's my SISD and market structure shift? Well, here is a nice market structure shift below this low. I'll mark it out with uh, this thing right here, this blue little circle. Okay, that's my market structure shift. You could also say a fees. Isn't this a market structure shift too? Yes, this is a intermediate term low, right? And this is a short term low. Both are valid. Once I get these market structure shifts and I get my SISD, what is the SISD? the activation of a breaker, right? This is the last down close candle before a move higher, which creates inefficiency, liquidates buy stops and tags a higher time frame PD array. I will release one of my private lectures on grading order blocks and breaker blocks for you guys, because I recognize I've been talking about that a lot. I will tell you how to grade the best order blocks and breakers in the market. Essentially what I just did right there. So now we have this breaker block, which I will mark out as this purple color. And I have this small fair value gap. The confluence of these two PD arrays together, right? Makes this a unicorn setup, right? A unicorn is just a breaker block contained within a fair value gap. So I marked that out and I'm willing to put on risk and risk this SMT high. Okay. So what I do is I entered this market here. I'm putting my stop loss again, based on the TP and SL management, right? Stop loss goes below lower, below or above lower time frame invalidation. Okay, stop loss here. And then first partial is gonna be 40 points or the swing low. 
So as you can see, this swing low is 42 points. That's fantastic. That's my first TP. And then I want to hold, you know, some contracts towards a higher time frame draw on liquidity. As you can see, we don't get there today. We put in a failure swing. That is why taking partials is so important. Now, I don't know if any of the any PO3 traders are here today in this lecture, but I actually posted this trade um, on my Twitter, right? I posted a live execution and I took off most of my contracts actually in this area here. This is the retracement reversal area, right? And you can go on my Twitter and see kind of how I manage that trade. Um, let me just make sure it's, I'll show you it's right here. So on my Twitter, I have uh, this trade execution right here. So I targeted the, the 2 to 2.5 region simply because I wasn't sure if we would leave a failure swing. And uh, once I saw structure start to break up higher, you know, obviously I knew we were going to leave that as a failure swing today in the market. Again, this is not related to market maker models. This is another concept, but it's a nice confluence to have. So that's a full and complete top down model. We're moving from the expectation of daily PD array, swing high, to daily PD array, swing low, because this intermediate uh, PD array right in here, this survival gap, is not being respected on our intermediate time frame. So we assume we're going lower. So once we get those two conditions met, right, SMT, ERL on the daily, our hourly frames, the complete market maker model, right? Again, I don't have to break down the schematic for you guys to see. I don't have to sit there and be like, here are the components of a market maker model. Look, it's the original consolidation, the accumulation. You can, you can go in, you can see that this accumulation, right, contains the swing low and the market is going to be expanding towards this consolidation and it consolidated up here, leaving a swing high, rating that swing high and then moving lower. So what we can do is one more example, and then I will take any last questions and I'll let you guys go because it's a long lecture. OG, OG means original. Yeah, original, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'll actually look at the questions at the very end and try and answer a few. Let's just do one more example to make it really clear. And I want to show you I'm not cherry picking examples. So let me pick a completely different time frame, guys. Let me use my four hour chart as my higher time frame. all right? And let me go back to a day I don't recognize. Um, well, let's, I want to make sure we have enough data. Okay, let's use something like, yeah, this. Okay. I'm going to replay it. Again, I'm, I, this is a random day. I haven't like back tested this day. <laughs> okay, so we have a four hour higher time frame array. So again, let's do our logic. Higher time frame is going to contain our PD array, ERL or IRL. We are going to wait for that PD array to be engaged by the market. I see this swing low in here, engaged. This is a swing low. So we'll label this. It's our H4 external range. The expectation from an external range liquidity purge is for price to move back internal, right? From external to internal. I think we've beat that one to death. So let's mark out our internal range. And I'll call this my H4 sell side imbalance, buy side efficiency. So we have an expectation already from, for price to move from external right, to internal. And we are going to be looking to frame an intermediate time frame market maker model. ITM, structure, or MMXM, which is going to be my 15 minute chart. So let's hop into that chart and see if we even get any confirmation that this move is going to happen. Remember, I'm not sitting here saying, guys, we swept this low, long it, go to that, go to that fair value gap. No, you have to wait for structure. Structure will save you. Okay, so now once we come into here, you can see, right, we sweep this low and then we start to displace higher. Do I get a market structure shift? No, right? Not until. I actually don't ever get a market. In this example, I don't ever get a market structure shift into this high. But what I do get is this really nice inversion fair value gap form, right? and then price comes back in and then moves up into it. So maybe this wasn't a great example because it doesn't offer you, it doesn't offer you uh, a great trade. Um, let's, let's pick another one. <laughs> okay, good thing to show I'm not cherry picking it. You could have gotten involved in that move using this inversion fair value gap, but there was no clear market search shift. So it wouldn't fit our rules. Again, it doesn't fit the rules. Not every trade is gonna fit your rules. Let's choose this swing low down here. So price comes in, liquidates this. So we're moving from external and we have, right? a bias to move to internal range liquidity. So I'll mark it out again. We have to wait for structure to form. So let's see what happens on the lower time frames. Let me just rewind this so we can get less candles. This is our expectation, external to internal. 
on the 15 minute chart, what we're going to do is we're going to wait, right? To see if structure is confirming this move. Again, what we want to see is some form of consolidation area that's resting in this PD array to target. That is going to be our original consolidation, right? Now we want to frame a buy model to be targeting this original consolidation, which contains this PD array, right? So now we wait for structure. We come in, we get our market structure shift above this high. I'll mark that out in black and I'll just say MSS. So now we have our 15 minute market structure. We're now in what I would call, right? Buy program activation. I have another lecture on my YouTube, which is on market maker models, where I dissect what this means, like buy program activation, order pairing, offset distribution, offset accumulation. You don't need to know any of this stuff. It's just concepts and theory. But right now I'm telling you, this is how you can actually identify in the structure. So down here is order pairing. We now want to distribute these longs into these highs right here, moving from external to internal. So let's see if we can get involved in the trade. Let me grab a kill zone indicator for us as well. So we can see, you know, our conditions. So the intermediate time frame, we got our market structure shift out of our higher time frame PD array. Remember, out of our higher time frame PD array. Here's our MSS for the keeners. Here is the SysD, right? Same level. And then we want to go down to our lower time frame in a kill zone and wait for these conditions. So on my 15 minute chart in the London session, do I see any conditions met? Yeah, I do. Right? I see this swing low taken. Right? No, it's very, very barely taken. One tick, but still, still a valid entry. So this swing low is taken on the 15, right? Inside of this PD array, a 15 minute BISI. So what I can do here is move down to a one minute chart. I hope I have enough data. Yep, nice. I can move down to a one minute chart. And now look for my lower time frame confirmation, right? What did I get? Liquidity sweep, premium discount, array retrace. I got both here, right? This is a liquidity sweep and this is in premium discount array. Right? Notice how price refers right back into that premium level. Or I guess it's right here, right into that premium level or discount level right here. So then once we get this engagement of this low, what we do is we wait for the same criteria to a form. We want to see a market structure shift. I see one right here. I also see another market structure and a SSD right above this eye. Now I wait to see if there's any PD arrays I can get involved in. Is there any PD that I can get involved in? Yes, I could have entered on this breaker right in here. So as price starts to, so let's let's pretend, let's say we're using this into this short term low right here, right? As our market structure shift, then you can use this breaker right here to get involved, which is gonna be this candle. You can take your entry somewhere in here and you wanna target. You want to target 40 points or some deviation level because I don't think you're going to hold all the way up to here, but you could. I mean, technically, if you want, once you take off some partials, you can hold some of your position all the way to the external draw, right? Which is a fantastic trade. Now, say you don't get this entry because this is a very, very early entry, extremely early entry. I don't think I would have taken that entry, honestly. What I would do is I'd wait for another, you know, consolidation and a form of entry. So let's go to our 15 minute chart. That was your low, again, that's our quote unquote low risk buy. Now we always assume that on the buy side of the curve, we'll have, we'll have probably two reaccumulations, but we want to see at least one. So in this case, you can see we have a really nice reaccumulation in here, right? But there's no PD array engaged, unfortunately, for us to get involved, is there? Nope, we don't, we don't sweep the low. So there's nothing to get involved in this first phase accumulation. Now let's see if we get a second phase accumulation entry. That's going to be in the New York session. Fantastic. So we come into the New York session, right? We still haven't liquidated our, you know, target in this four hour gap is going to be this target. So what we do is we wait for a 15 minute market structure shift in here. Boom. Right. And then we have a fair value gap. And then boom, yada, yada, where we take another trade somewhere on the one minute, you're going to get an entry. You want to just target, you know, just that high TP one, TP two. And then finally we get our original consolidation high, right? This news candle high as well. 
and use candles act as a draw on liquidity. So that's TP3. So there's an example of the four hour model playing out, going from higher time frame PD rate, intermediate time frame structure, lower time frame entries. Now let's do an example on, you know, let's say you're a monthly trader, right? Now you're talking about positional trading or swing trading. These concepts apply on all time frames. So look, let me mark out my monthly inefficiency. Again, the market is moving from external to internal, internal to external, right? There hasn't been a higher time frame uh, array that was going to make us go lower than this, right? So right now we're expecting just external to internal, internal to external, right? So once we tag this monthly array, we're now going from monthly internal to monthly external. And this is the draw on liquidity. Now on the daily chart, which is going to be the intermediate time frame to the monthly chart, we're waiting for a few things. Again, what else are we going to see? Most likely here. I don't even have to look at it. I'm, I already know there's going to be an SMT. The market doesn't reverse that SMT. And that's just because I've seen and tested so many market maker models. I already know there's going to be an SMT here, right? So look, this low. Let's see. Let me go down to the daily chart. Okay, and there we go. Is that the SMT? Let me see. Uh, maybe not that one. Maybe it's this one. Is there not an SMT here? Maybe there's not. No, maybe there isn't an SMT. Maybe they both they uh maybe they both don't take it. No, oh, it's a failure swing. Okay. Well maybe there's not an SMT there on the daily. But let's use the same same thesis and let's see if there's maybe a higher time from SMT once we get a reversal here. Uh, we wait for a daily market structure shift. I really thought there was an SMT there. Hmm. Maybe this wasn't as high quality as I thought. I would I would ideally like to see an SMT. Maybe there's Dow. Let me look at Dow quickly. I sorry, it's just confusing me why I'm not seeing an SMT <laughs> where I really thought there would be. Let me see. Dow should give me my SMT. Ah, there it is. Okay. So from this low to here, we have our SMT. Perfect. Okay. Nice. Now I can be happy and say there's an SMT. Again, right? Higher time frame, you want to look at all three and indices. I prefer to see ES and NASDAQ, to be completely honest. But like I said, I will look at Dow um, on the higher time frames as well as like specific high impact news days. So here's our SMT with Dow, confirming a reversal. Now we wait for our market structure shift right here, right? On the daily, we get one there, we get one here. And now you want to wait for your daily conditions. All right, well, I see right in here a nice daily FVG, right? So on my daily chart, I've now hit my intermediate time frame condition, hop down to my hourly chart, right? Three time frames. And let's see if I can take a nice entry somewhere on my hourly chart. So we come into my daily inefficiency. We start to displace. Fantastic. I get this entry right in here. See how price just really rapidly displaces through here. The only entry I get in here is this, and I'm targeting this low just to the side. That's it. And then where am I leaving runners? I'm gonna put my stop loss probably at, you know, below this, what I am assuming to be a breakaway gap. Again, I have a lecture on breakaway gaps as well. Maybe I'll drop that in the future. My mentorship students have that. And then what I wanna do is eventually be targeting this, right? And every time I get a daily condition, I can look to add. So if you're a swing trader, right? You can be looking to add at PD arrays that make sense to you. So look, here's another PD array. We create a new dealing range. Remember, our new dealing range creates high resistance liquidity. So we've swept the lower time frame liquidity here. Swing low, swing high. Nice. Comes into discount. I see this liquidation level right here. Let me see if after this liquidity sweep, I can get involved in the hourly and add to my position, right? So I take one entry down here. There's, there, here's my first entry. So I'll mark it out with maybe this, this uh, purple. Purple are going to be my entries. So I have one entry in here for this monthly IRL to ERL. Now I'm going to have another opportunity on my lower time frame to get involved. 
in this daily fair value gap. So here's my first position. And now I'm a swing trader, so I'm looking to add until my uh, draw gets met, right? Okay, fantastic. I come into here, wait for my structure break. No structure break. Oh, here's a nice structure break. And then maybe I want to get involved in this order block, right? Order block or this fair value gap, whatever, right? Whatever you want to choose. I would say this order block is nice. Um, I would also, I also like the idea of getting involved in the halfway point of this candle. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay. So I would probably set a limit order somewhere there. This is the mean threshold of this down close candle. And then again, here's my second position, right? And you want to again, risk this low, which is where the order pairing happens. Smart money reversal happens right there. Again, my previous lecture talks about order pairing more specifically. And then as you can see, you've now built in two positions in this swing, right? From monthly IRL to monthly ERL. I will also assume there's probably going to be an SMT in here as well, which you can use to qualify that ad, right? Let's see if we get another SMT somewhere in here. Yeah, right? Perfect. Boom. This takes out this, which is going to be our SMT level. And then there we go. All the conditions have been met that I've taught in this lecture today. For taking another entry right there. So here's how a daily market maker model or a, a, a daily market maker model plays out. Again, buy side of the curve, sell side of the curve. And if you can see, if you're really shrewd, you're going to see the retrace from this high into here liquidated this original consolidation, right? And then what do we target on the buy side? This consolidation. So going back right back to the first section, right? Part one, the market is moving between consolidations and expansions. When is it? When it's expanding, it's targeting old consolidations that rest below higher time frame PD arrays or above higher time frame PD arrays. The only time it reverses is at a higher time frame PD array that it engages. Well, let's repeat that statement. The market is either consolidating or expanding towards old consolidations, right? Look, resting above these highs, which is going to be our old monthly highs, is a consolidation. Fantastic. So we liquidate this consolidation with this expansion. Now the market reverses at a higher time frame PD array. This is our higher time frame PD array, right? Now when the market reverses, it is going to be targeting a previous consolidation that rests above or below a higher time frame PD array. Well, look at this. This is our higher time frame bullish fair value gap on the monthly, external to internal. Great. We've now liquidated this consolidation. I make that a blue line. Now, what is the market going to do? Expand towards an old consolidation, which now rests above or below a, high, a higher time frame PD array on the monthly. What is this? It's a monthly swing high because the time based component of a consolidation, not the price, creates the PD array in time. A swing high can only be put in if there is a dealing range over time that creates that as a high over this axis, not this axis. This is just price. Like you can't trade a chart that looks like this. It's not possible. You need to see time create structural points. That's a structural pivot because it's a time based higher time frame high ERL. Then the market expands towards it, right? And you'll see this happens on every single time frame, no matter what time frames you choose for your intermediate, lower or higher. I can go down to a one hour chart. And if I mark out a one hour consolidation, right, I'll know there's a daily PD array above it. But let's go to a five minute chart. Let me mark out any five minute consolidation. OK, here's a five minute consolidation. In the Asian session, resting below this five minute consolidation without looking at my hourly chart, I know, sorry. Right here is an hourly FEG or or swing low. I already know without looking at my hourly chart, this is a time based consolidation after this inefficiency or after this displacement. I'm assuming it's going to be an FEG and a swing low. Right, there you go. See, there's the inefficiency and these this is the swing low. So if I look at my five minute chart again, I want to find more consolidations that the market will target in a sell program, not just randomly in a sell program. We will come back to old low consolidations in a buy program. We will come back to old buy consolidations. So look right above this high. 
in here, right above this box, is going to be an hourly based PD array of a higher time on the higher time room. What's a five minute? So off from home, right? Well, I see it. There's these swing highs, and there's also this swing high. So this is all low resistance liquidity. So now on the five minute chart, when we get a reversal at another hourly PD array, where did that go? Where are we going to be targeting? Well, this is the original consolidation, and resting above that is ERL. So we're going to come down into something higher time frame. This is an hourly swing low, right? And there's an SMT formed here probably. Let me see. Let's let's see if that's true. All right, so an SMT forms here. Let's see if we get that. Taking out those lows. Yeah, there we go. So here's our SMT right in here with the S. So ES liquidates the lows. You can see that right here. Fantastic. There's our SMT. And now we have a reversal in order flow from external back into internal. So now we want to target this side of the curve. And again, if you see on the hourly, what's that going to be? A complete market maker buy model, right? All the way back up to here. Here's our market structure shift. Here is our entries. One fair value gap in here. Aligned with the... I don't know if that's a fair value gap even. It's too small. No, that's not a good PD array to choose. Let me choose a better one. Maybe we can choose this order block. There's one entry. Maybe we can choose somewhere in this wick as a second entry. Again, the entry patterns are less important. The entry patterns are almost irrelevant like i don't teach entry patterns really that often i teach narrative and look this is another inversion fair value gap you can use to get long there is you know a host of entry patterns you can use once the draw on liquidity is established the narrative is established price is going to be targeting you know this external range so as you can see we can also use things like you know our deviation projections to try and frame where price wants to move Okay, so that's those are multiple examples. Um, if you want more examples, like I said, just like uh, check out my Twitter. I post recaps almost every single day of market maker models. That's all I trade is market maker models, and you'll see every part of my analysis is simplified and starts with a line and a box, right, on on three different time frames. And then we add in a whole bunch of confluences. So I also teach intraday profiling, weekly profiling, protraction, right? PD array selection, all sorts of stuff. But really, as my, as my students know, the basics are just market maker models. And once you understand the market maker models themselves, this interaction on all three time frames becomes fractal and understandable. So yeah, that's the lecture today. I'm gonna end the stream there. Let me all look at some questions quickly. Yeah, I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna upload this live stream. Um, like I, I might like sell it for like five bucks a recording after, um, but uh, I'll give it to my students for sure after. And then it, everyone who watched it live, watched it live for free. There's nothing. On that hourly example, which FPG do you know choose since there is more than one? Great question. So again, every time, every time I see multiple PD arrays, right? So for example, um, here. Say I wanted to frame some sort of reversal in here, right? I would have been wrong, but say I wanted to. I have to wait for the five minute structure if I'm looking at the hour to give me a signal. As you can see, when we trade in to these PD arrays, right? Like look, when I trade into this hourly fair value gap, the only entry signal I get long, actually I don't get one. Do I get a displacement out of this fair value gap? No, I need to displace above here, right? Look at the condition. One second, let me pull up the, the criteria. You must wait, right, for a uh, shift out of your higher time frame PD array. So in this case, right, our higher time frame PD array to the hourly, or to the five minute is the hourly. We never get a market structure shift out of this PD array. We need to close above here, right? Because in a higher time frame, what's that gonna look like? A wick, right? It's gonna look like a long wick. Now we're gonna move higher. But if we don't close out of the PD array with a five minute marker shift, there's no entry signal. So we just wait, we keep waiting. And then again, we come into this lower hourly fair value gap. And you notice how we do not get a market structure shift out of this PD array. 
right? The hourly never gives us, even though we start to displace higher here, I have to look for a market structure shift out of the PD array. That's such a critical distinction, by the way. Great question. You want to wait for that PD array to offer support. And essentially what you want to be waiting for is a wick to form in that PD array on your higher time frame. So if you're on the five minute, you're going to want your hourly to look like this, right? You're going to want it to be a long wick on the hourly to show that price came in, order pairing happened in here, and now we're displacing higher. That's how you select the correct PD array. Um, really, really, really great question, actually. Um, that's a mistake I've made lots of times is not waiting for structure on all three time frames to be aligned, right? So say you want to short in uh, here, right, on the four hour chart. Okay, or say you want better, better yet, because this is even more discount. Say you want to shorten here, right? Let's look at the 50 minute chart. As you can see, like once we come into this array, right, we get a 15 minute market structure shift right here. So our entry could be, and it is a valid trade from this high to this low. 70 points then price reverses and moves higher so that gives you a good valid signal let's look at an example where you don't get a valid signal so there you got a winning trade right a four hour 50 minute what about in uh this pd array right here right you want to go from here down i'm pretty sure you're gonna get a valid signal as well let's see you want to wait for a mark shift out of the pd array uh you have a small fair value gap in here and then on the one minute charts, do you get a trade? Let's see. So much data to go through. So this is the area we want to wait. Yep. And then you can see, right? So here is the consolidation on the one minute. Here is the entry in this area. Yep. Do you get you get your uh, original consolidation liquidity? Yep, you do right here. And then price reverses. So what do you think's below here? Probably a 15 minute array, right? And as you can see, <laughs> just like clockwork, right? There is the array we're reversing from because price can only reverse at a higher time frame PD array. So there you go. That, that's how you confirm order flow in a inefficiency or swing low. Um, I think that answers your question. I hope it does. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna wait for structure to tell you um, what's going on. It's the same reason why you see this big gap in here. Like the same reason why this big gap in here, what you want to wait for on, let's go, let's move back here, right? You don't want to just start shorting here, here, here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's going to be a mess, right? Because look, you're going to get like here and then you're going to come up 30 points draw down here. You might get stopped out at break even here, right? It's messy and it's choppy. Once we break structure below, right? This inefficiency this is a 15 minute gap. It's also a higher time frame gap. Once we start to break structure below and go lower, then you get to trade something like this, right? Right, because now we have confirmed bearish order flow. And then look at price movement here. It's just nice and one, it's, it takes like, you know, 20 minutes and you hit your TP. So that's what I would say is you want to wait for the intermediate time frame, uh, PD array, and the lower time frame to really show you the structure. And that it's up to your personal risk what you want to see. Some people like to wait for the low risk entry and then the second phase entry because this is all fractal, right? So this is happening on the higher time frame, it's happening on the intermediate time frame and the lower time frame. I hope that answers your question. Will you talk about quarterly theory someday? Um, I do have a top down. Yeah, I have lots of top down approach videos on my channel. A uh, really good point, Dbizzle. I have like three specific videos on that. Um, why is time so important? Time is, okay you know what this is a context for another lecture really good question dm me about that well we'll talk about why time is so important how do i join your mentorship you can dm me my mentorship's full for this month and it's pretty full for next month too honestly but dm me and we'll we'll, we'll chat is using the h4 m15 m1 good for entry trading absolutely um a lot like i think like four or five of my students are are h4 m15 m1 traders um a lot of us trade the daily and some of us trade both it just depends on what peter is we see right would you say the buy program is started on NQ and what are you expecting tomorrow? Uh, good question. I would I would continue to be uh, bearish until we liquidate this swing low at least since we now put in a double bottom. And if you know me, I never actually uh, long double bottoms without an SMT. 
So you can see here, we have no SMT with a yes at those lows. So for me, that is low resistance liquidity. Uh, you can see we have daily swing lows on ES and NASDAQ. For me, right, on the daily chart, this looks like exactly the schematic. We are reaccumulating and we put in something called an LRLR signature on the hourly, which is going to be a low resistance liquidity run signature. So if you can frame this as your market maker model and this is your original consolidation in here. Oops, wrong box. This is your original consolidation in here, right? Now we can see we have our smart money reversal up here with our SMT, smart money reversal. Our first phase of accumulation right in here, right in here. And now we're gonna have a second phase of accumulation, I think right in here. I would love to see price come back into a discount, or a premium rather, of this dealing range, which we're starting to, to move into. So that's my expectation. I would anticipate before NFP, we liquidate this low, at the very least. I Again, higher time frame, like I told you, I am still quite bearish based on this thesis I have uh, here. And once let me pull it up. This is my uh, longer term thesis. Right. I want to see us come back into these IPTA 20 day lows and this monthly inefficiency, which really nicely contains this daily consolidation, right? External on the monthly to internal on the monthly. Um, that's kind of where my thoughts are at, but I'm going to take it day by day and day by day means I really like to see uh, this consolidation level liquidated tomorrow. We have very, very nice failure swings. You see that low resist, this is called a LR, LR signature. And I talk about that a lot in some of my videos. Go watch some of my other YouTube videos. Great question. Uh, can you explain why you mentioned the silver bullet? Yeah, the silver bullet is the second phase distribution of a market maker model. And that's that's how ICT used to teach it. And then he taught it as a time-based PDRA or time-based FEG. Essentially, when you have this first level of accumulation and then distribution, the second phase of accumulation and this expansion is usually the most explosive. So yeah, silver bullet is the second phase distribution or uh, redistribution or reaccumulation in a, in a uh, market maker model. How can we implement London to predict New York? Protraction, I'm gonna make some videos on YouTube. I have a PDF on my Twitter um, specifically on protraction and uh, my students know that we do a couple lectures uh, a couple lectures in the mentorship on that topic so I would start with my PDF um, and then like DM me if you want to learn more about protraction when you trade the daily hourly in five minute do you agree that if you look at example for our PD arrays you're just confused honestly yeah sometimes it's there's too many signals sometimes you'll have four hour PD arrays and daily PD arrays in opposition right so what you'll want to do right when you have uh, different time frame PD arrays is you'll want to focus on your specific model. Sometimes it helps to know where the higher time frames are going, but when you're sticking to your three time frames, I would suggest when you're starting, just look at those three time frames. Can you touch base on how power of three? Yeah, power of three and market maker models is a completely new lecture. So maybe we'll do it in the future. How do you know it's going to be LRLR? I see a failure swing in the market and I still see a bearish thesis. I haven't gotten it right. I have out. So again, right, there's not a monthly gap here. I don't know why I have that. Out of my daily, I have no daily array, which I can key off of. So as you can see, we closed below this daily fair value gap, this small one in here. So for me, the only draw right now is this low and we didn't have an SMT at this swing low. So at the moment, the market is still seeking this external range low, this fair value gap, right? I remember we said, we want to see it wick. We didn't get that. In fact, we closed through it. So now I'm going to be considering this to be a natural support or inversion level. In fact, um, for lower prices. That is why I'm still bearish. Mm -hmm. There was an S and with YM. Yeah, 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 you're right, Jamie. <laughs> I didn't look at that until uh, I would confuse myself by looking at ES. Low risk buy and first accumulation, they look so similar. How do you distinguish? Yeah, the low risk buy is going to be um, essentially right after our first market structure shift. Whereas the first accumulation is going to be after we expand and then reaccumulate. So the LRE and, and the first accumulation sometimes are close to each other. But if we look at an example of the hourly chart here, where is my example? Let's go pull up the hour now. Zoom in on the hourly chart here, right? So the low risk entry is going to be on this SMT. So we get the reversal up here, right? On Monday. And then we get this turtle soup right here where ES takes out these highs. Actually, ES takes out these highs and NASDAQ doesn't. This is going to be considered your LRE, your low risk sell. 
right? That's the turtle soup. And then we have our first accumulation in here. And then this is our entry right here. It just didn't fit my criteria. I like to see a fair value gap. This may have been keying off, you know, this inversion fair value gap level, right? As you can see, we're respecting the mean or the consequent encroachment of that of that level. I wanted to see a fair value gap. And as you can see, we just had these these uh, wicks. Um, so I didn't get an entry, but that was the first uh, the, the first accumulation. Now we're getting our second phase accumulation. And I'd love to see us come, you know, key off of the sell side and then see what happens. A fee is that low as part of the weekly low alongside the four hour SSD. Wouldn't that be a good higher time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So if you can find a higher time frame like low in, in so you have two time frame lows, right? Here's maybe like a weekly swing low down here. I don't know if that's what you're talking about or a daily. Here's a daily swing low and an hourly swing low and a four hour swing low. Absolutely. You can use different time frames. I like to choose the highest time frame. So if I have a monthly high and a daily high, I'm going to use my monthly structure once it's confirmed. Um, but you can scalp, you know, a lower time frame market maker model. It's all about being dynamic. What's your opinion about quarterly theory? I don't really use quarterly theory. I use a lot of other time-based theory. So I use protraction, weekly profiling, intraday profiling, uh, kill zones. I use um, standard deviation and power of three. So candle opens, opening high, low close, uh, and true opens. So I'll use like midnight opening, true session opens. Um, what does your student learn more than lecture today? My students learn a lot. We have lectures every week and we do homework and live trading and all sorts of stuff. Um, usually fills that wiki most well. What's your go-to trading timeframes? Definitely the daily hourly M5. Those are my, that that's my bread and butter. That's what I became profitable trading with. Uh, Mr. Little bit, will we record it? Yes, I'm probably gonna be selling this recording after for those who couldn't attend live for like five bucks or something, just because I'm giving it to my students for free and I'm doing it free on YouTube. So if you caught it, you caught it. If not, like five bucks is nothing. It's a pretty high, high value lecture, I hope. I hope, let me know, give me feedback. <laughs> I was talking about the swing low that you were targeting today. Is that a weekly low? Um, that's not weekly external range lows, right? So let me hide everything. Oops, let me hide everything. Right, this here is a previous week low, but it's not an external range low. So if that is confusing to you, go watch my video on swing structure. What qualifies a swing point in the market? Here is the weekly low. So if you were gonna draw it out, this low here would be my weekly ERL. That's confusing. Go watch my swing structure lecture. It should make a bit more sense. I think that one is a uh, public. I think I posted that uh, for everyone to watch. If not, just DM me and I can I can send that to you. I don't mind giving that to you for free. Um, yeah. So that's that's a that's a previous week low, which is a daily swing low, but it's not a weekly external range liquidity because it's not a pivot in the market. Great question. Mm, how do you go about weekly profiling? I have several lectures on weekly profiling, and I have several resources on it as well that I posted on Twitter. So if we yeah, so you can look right here. Um, actually, let me go to my Twitter. That's a better place. I have a whole uh, thread that I posted on weekly profiling that I made with one of my students, Willie. And uh, we talk about profiling as a classic bi week. And there's an example here. And then there's also midweek reversals. Resources here. And then I have a full lecture on consolidation reversal. And then also in my, in my mentorship, we have the other uh, two profiles we look at and we have the recorded lectures on those. Um, yeah, so we, that's how we learn uh, weekly profiling. But most of it I have uh, given out for free on YouTube. So definitely go look at that. Yep. Okay. Um, any more questions, guys? It's been a long, long stream, like almost yeah, an hour and a half. So any more questions you guys have, just DM me. Check out my channel if you have any other, like uh, if you have any questions about the top down analysis, there's tons of examples um, and my Twitter. And yeah. My DMs are always open and yeah, I hope you guys found it useful. Give me a like and subscribe, share if you found it useful and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy guys. Peace.